lesson, we're going to build on what we did yesterday and on the day before. Um, so on Monday, we were checking out some picking technique stuff for our major triad tension to quadratonic, right? And then yesterday we took that same structure, that major triad tension to quadratonic, and we did some ear training with it over a dominant chord, specifically Lydian dominant. I'm going to do a quick recap of that just to get our ears started because I'm under the belief that we should always start our practice sessions with waking our ears up first because most of us don't really listen and hear what we're playing. So we're going to do a very quick recap of yesterday, get our ears working in, and then we're going to apply that to some 5-1 action, some dominant tonic, flat 2, uh, flat 2 dominant to tonic. Uh, and if we have time, maybe we'll then try and apply that into a tune. But our goal today is going to be to get this Lydian dominant sound happening in a very musical way with spontaneous phrases that are implying tension resolution, right? Implying the sound of dominant tonic um, without being overly obvious about running the changes or outlining them. And to get us to the point where we don't really need riffs, we can just kind of play some simple phrases that imply the movement from a dominant to a tonic in a very musical way. That's our goal, okay? Gary, what's up, man? Great to see you. Um, so, C major triad. Right? Very vanilla, very boring, very plain. Any note we add to this, there's nine other notes that exist in Western music. We have 12, and I'm playing around with three, so there's nine other notes. Any other note that we add to this is going to add drama to the line, tension. The tension that we've been listening to this week is tension two. So that's the two against the C major triad, C, D. So I'm just adding a D note. than the Coltrane pattern. It is the same set of notes, but we're not just trying to get through this for technique's sake right now, or to build up speed or patterns or anything. We're trying to use it to create this emotion. Did you hear it? Parker's music, this is in Monk, this is in everybody's music. It's a very simple structure, but it offers us the ability to kind of put this sound under the microscope with our ear and really get to know it. Uh, it seems small, but I always like to remind myself and everyone else, we only have 12 notes in music. This is four of them, so this is actually a third of our fretboard. So we're isolating a third of our fretboard out, a third of our options and we're giving ourselves a chance to hear the tension of resolution in it. Then what we did yesterday, right, was we put this, even though it's a C major triad, we put this over a B flat dominant chord. Right, notice that the C note still sounds like the root note here, even though I'm playing it all over B-flat, B-flat 7. That's a C note. C note. If I play a B-flat note right now, it's not going to sound stable. You hear how it sounds like the flat 7? It wants to resolve back up to C. Even though I'm playing it over a B-flat 7 chord, the B-flat note in this particular color, this Lydian dominant 13 sharp 11 9 sound, the chord's root note is not the melodic root note. So there's a, there's a harmonic structure and there's a melodic structure, and they're behaving a little bit differently right now. The harmonic structure is B-flat, D, F, A-flat, right? The melodic structure is C major, 
with a tension 2. So C, D, E, G. And C is the root note, and D is the melodic tension note, which happens to be the third of the B-flat chord. think so too. Uh, this is a, such a great sound, one of my favorite um, dominant colors. Now let's get into today's lesson, which is applying this into music. This is a dominant chord, but it really doesn't function to my ear. Feel free to experiment and prove me wrong and show me why it does work this way for you. But in my ear, this does not work very well as a five chord, as a five dominant, right? Meaning the fifth of the key. So like B flat seven, I would call this B flat 13 sharp 11 nine because C, E, and G, the C triad notes, give us the 13 sharp 11 and nine of B flat. So we've now stabilized the 13, the sharp 11, and the nine. These are not crazy, wacky, complicated upper structure, upper extensions that we're gluing onto the side of something, right? This isn't like abstract ideas, this is now stability. This is our home base for the melody line at this point. So that's why I would name this B flat 13 sharp 11 9 because the 13, the sharp 11, the 9 are actually like structural pillars now in the melody that are holding up this particular color. Um, I don't find this to behave as a 5 dominant. I find this behaves best as a flat 2. Okay, so that's the tritone sub. So B flat is a tritone away from E7. So both E7 and B flat 7 can resolve to some type of A. Right? E7 would resolve to A minor or A major or A dominant. because it's the tritone sub, can also resolve to either. Tritone subs always resolve down a half step. B flat 7, A minor. B flat 7, A major. So we're just going to explore a little bit with both of these um, and just listen to how they sound. Okay. Um, and our goal is going to be to use that quarter tonic I was just playing with C major tension two. We're gonna start with that. If we have time, maybe we'll explore adding in some leading tones and chromaticism to get a little bit uh, of sort of a more modern or even bebop-esque vibe to it. But we're just looking for simple phrases. Okay, so I'm gonna start really simple. I'm just gonna play shell voicing, B flat seven, C major tension two phrase, like a piano player, left hand, right hand. Gonna play a simple chord shell voicing. Simple phrase, resolve to the next chord. All right, G, I'm just literally descending the quadratonic. I'm not even doing anything that creative, but I'm taking advantage of the tension note. Okay, this is a good way to train yourself. 
yourself for solo guitar, this could be a whole other dimension to playing versus chord melody. I'm not harmonizing every note, I'm doing sort of more like a piano player, little chord stabs with little phrases in between. Right? Could be for trio playing, could be for just getting used to ear training, the sound of chords moving while you're playing melodic ideas on top of it as opposed to outlining changes. Um, once we get this idea, we can start messing around just even rhythmically. We don't even need to change the pitches yet. Same pitches, I'm just kind of pedaling on this top note. Right, I held the first note a little longer. Let's, let's move around a little bit. Okay, before I was just landing on C and holding it, but what if we descend down? changes, I'm just trying to imply the sound of it. Any number of chord progressions could be happening underneath this, but if I were playing over flat 2 dominant to the 1, to the minor 1, this would work with it. It would be super respectful but I'm not really being obnoxious about it melodically. You know, it's not... Okay, now I'm messing around a little bit more. Now I'm not just descending. Minor. 
Jerome Jr. Staff's about to die. I guess we're going rubato for the rest of this lesson. Um, you start to see how much freedom there is inside this. Again, we're not outlining anything. We're not running scales. Uh, we're not using arpeggios. We're using chord tones. The 13, the sharp 11, and the 9 are chord tones. Um, they're just not the 1, 3, 5, 7 chord tones. For this particular sound, the 1, 3, 5, and 7 of B flat would all be melodic tension notes. continue exploring that, that's just in one position. We could go lower in the position. Let's do that for a minute and then we'll switch over and we'll try this with A major and then we'll start to wrap up and I'll see if there was any questions. Miles, so hip sounding. Thanks man. Uh, I'm glad you dig it. I, again, I love this uh, this particular dominant chord. Getting away from the one, three, five, seven, mixing things up a little bit, not making everything five, one, but getting that chromatic half step down resolution to me is, is huge for developing um, good vocabulary, harmonically and melodically. triad, not of B-flat. Can you feel that leading tone? There's an emotion to it, right? This is not just like a music theory idea. If leading tones only exist up here for you, you will never be able to make them sound authentic and musical because this isn't going to help you. This and this. You have to be able to hear that squeezing, craving effect of a leading tone. The first time you heard this note was a leading tone, the second time it was a resolution note over the next chord. because it's not about a scale tone or a chord tone or anything. We're just listening to tension and resolution points. And we can change where those are at any given moment, especially if we're basing everything on the triad. It's relatively easy once you get used to triads because you can just see which notes are triad notes and which ones aren't. Here's what this would sound like if we're resolving to A major instead of A minor.
chromaticism. Just connecting the G note and the E note from the C major triad. And then resolving to the next chord. I'm not outlining anything, right? I'm not painting by numbers. I'm not looking at a color book and seeing, okay, this is supposed to be red, okay, this is supposed to be green. I'm just looking at where I know very strong resolution notes will sit and then using chromatic line, which is a form of tension, to get me from here to over here. three notes less than a diatonic scale. It's only one third of our options, but we actually have access to all 12 notes, right? We can use all 12 notes from the chromatic scale, but now they all fit inside a very uh, precise sort of structure, a hierarchy, like a totem pole. C major is at the top, right? Because it's the root note of the triad. Then we have E and G, because they're part of the triad. They're not the root note, but they're still part of it. So they're within the, the organized system of, of resolution. Then we have our primary tension note, tension two. So within this quadratonic, we kind of have three different layers, right? We have complete resolution. We have colorful resolution-ish points. We have a really good tension note. It gives us the third of B flat seven, but it's still tension. And then we have the, all of the other notes. We have all eight other notes that can be used either as chromaticism or as leading tones. Nobody would ever hear me play that at a gig and think that I was just looking at C major, A major. What did I play? Uh, seven sharp eleven. So left we, if we applied this to something like, you know, the opening couple of measures of autumn leaves, we need to move everything down a whole step. But instead of going to D7, even if the bass player goes to D7, it doesn't matter. They're tritone subs to each other. So we can just think about A minor, A flat, 13 sharp, 11, 9. So uh, 
uh, measure two and measure eight of the A section, we can use this exact thing. In fact, I think we could do it over the B7. We could play F7 instead. There, I, uh, I'm not going to get an, into that because it would take me a little too long to explain, but that was the 13 sharp 11 9. I was superimposing it over something else. of B flat you can play the the Benson on Broadway lick um, I don't remember I don't know exactly that was a few minutes ago so I don't remember what I was playing that that you're referring to but uh, it's possible again I know that I use kind of funny words and ideas and concepts sometimes but I'm not trying to invent anything new I'm just noticing patterns in the sound that we're all hearing in the music already um, and using a lot of ideas from my teacher, Stefan, to kind of help organize it and make sense of it so that we can break it down into little small building blocks and practice those building blocks and get better. There was no scale runs today. Uh, like on Monday, we were working on technique, trying to get fast runs with this sound. Right? We were actively working on speed and technique, which is fine. But if we can't just hear the sound, which hearing, ear training was what we did yesterday, um, if we can't just hear the sound and just be playful with the simple parts of it, then we're not really in control of it. Then it's just an idea up here. We gotta get it out of the head, into the ear, into the body and the heart, into the fingers, our mapping of the fretboard. Um, but it's all just sounds that are already out there from Benson to Tchaikovsky to, you know, uh, Paul Simon, like regardless of musical style, if it's if it's Western tonal music that relies on these twelve pitches, these sounds exist. Um, yeah, good stuff. All right. Um, if you guys have any questions, leave them in the comments below. And uh, tomorrow we'll be doing some comping ideas. Not really sure exactly what yet, but I'll figure out something fun. And uh, until then. As always, happy practicing. Hey YouTube, it's Jordan Clemens with NYC Jazz Guitar Master Classes and the Melodic Triad Study Group. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I have a ton of content coming out on YouTube this year. We've been doing daily jazz guitar lessons. So I'm gonna be posting videos like this pretty much every day. So if you dug this and you wanna follow me, Subscribe and make sure that you turn on notifications so that you can watch more videos like this. Thanks again for watching. Hope to see you in the comment section. Hope to see you in the next video.